For some reason, the comments on the last video were far and away the nicest you've ever been to me, so we thought we'd do it again, this time with Universal Recipes. If you have been with us for a while, you'll know that the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is one of my favorite places in the world. We're gonna eat our way through the park. And so we're gonna kinda skew this in a magical direction. We are going to make some butterbeer today, some pumpkin pasties, pasties, I never did learn how to pronounce it, and... Oh, green eggs and ham, which has nothing to do with Harry Potter, but we're gonna do that anyway because Julie and I love to eat it. I did specifically avoid anything having to do with the food processor. If this doesn't turn on, you are going to see me throw a fit like you've never seen before in the history of all iconic eats. Yep, cool. So if you were here to specifically watch me destroy one, you can turn off the video now. Let's do it. <laughs> so you don't think I'm being crazy. Liz is here operating the camera this time around. Oh God. We are starting with pumpkin pasties. Also, I need to be upfront and tell you that when I was shopping for ingredients, I went with as many prepackaged things as possible so as to make my life easier for fear that I would actually injure myself with a food processor this time. So this recipe requires making kaido from scratch. I'm not gonna do that. I bought some frozen uh, but I am going to mush a bunch of pumpkin adjacent stuff into a bowl so I can stuff it into frozen pie crust. So, I bought some frozen pie crust. I guess I have to open that because eventually I have to stuff a pumpkin mixture into it. You'll be thrilled to know I couldn't find canned pumpkin anywhere in the state of New Jersey, so we are using butternut squash baby food. She's shaking her head now. Uh. Okay, so we are combining all of the ingredients into a large bowl. You'll note, not a food processor. And we're gonna whisk it all until smooth. So, we need brown sugar, which is great. I have brown sugar. I never really measure salt, so that's fine. Whatever. Vanilla, whoops. Oh, are you gonna be mad if I stick my... Yes. Vanilla teaspoon into cinnamon? Yes, oh. you must try it off. Okay. You may not do that. You'll ruin the whole thing. Great air made here today. Okay, I dried it. Can I dry it? Or you yeah, it's drying. It's fine. So. Are you leveling it? Yes, I'm leveling it. A quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. There's only so much you can ask of me. And egg yolk. I can do this. The beauty of this recipe is there's only one egg, so I can't. I don't have to worry about adding one at a time. <gasps> it literally said add the eggs one at a time, didn't it? Okay. Oh, well if I, well, really didn't think that one through. Really didn't think that one through. So we need half a cup of pumpkin and I had no gauge of what that translates into in terms of pureed baby food. So I bought a lot of baby food that eventually I guess I'm just going to eat because I bought it. And we really like to commit to a bit here. I don't feel good about this. <laughs> but you know what, okay. When you taste pumpkin juice when you're in the wizarding world, oh yeah. <laughs> You notice that there is like a pear-like sweetness to it. And this is butternut squash pear mixture. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes, please, I would like that sound effect. I'd like it amplified. I would like you to zoom in on my face and what happens so we can really experience the misery of that score together. Okay, so now there's baby food in here. And sweetened condensed milk, three tablespoons. Oh, that's not bad. How's that? Fine. As you can see now, it's one mass of uh, sludge and 
when I mix it like this, like nothing happens. It's all very separated, which again probably is because each ingredient is very sludge like on its own. So we are whisking. We are CEOs of whisking. The filling is smooth-ish. It is near smooth. And we are, oh no, we are going to take this pre-assembled frozen pie crust that when I took out of the freezer, I dropped down so aggressively I've already shattered into pieces and cut it into teeny tiny pies. Pan pies, pasties. How are you gonna do that? I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Oh, transfer them to parchment lined baking sheet. wax paper, not parchment paper. Is there a difference? Yes. Okay. Fine. Can you eat raw? I don't know. No. Okay. Yeah, this, this is good. And I'm just going to bake the pie crust anyway. <gasps> no. Oh, I broke it. Are you proud of me? Uh, yes, I am there. Just talking to the dogs. Just such a fond memory for me. That was when we had Julia come down, eat our way through Islands of Adventure together. We had a blast tormenting Chelsea that day. <laughs> there was weeping. Are they sad to you? I don't know they are anymore. I'm so tired and so confused. <laughs> this is my life. But there was salty potatoes and cheese to console us. So we were 
really very happy and pleased with ourselves. That's how I remember this. For this, I could not find regular tater tots in all of the state of New Jersey. Believe me, I tried. So we're making sweet potato puffs. We have some canned queso, which is cool. I did see that we were meant to make basil on our own. I said, F that, no food processor. Oh my God. Fine basil, which feels so luxurious. Pesto. Pesto, whatever. It is a superlative feeling to stand here and look at that dumpy food processor in the corner of the kitchen and know that I have no intent of using it today. She rises from the ashes. Okay, so in a bowl, mix together. Oh, this is interesting. So I'm gonna put the eggs in a bowl, scramble them, put in a tablespoon of pesto, put that up in the oven and bake it. Okay, I just need to get in the tater tot egg space. So basically what's going to happen here. What? Oh, it's so this is great. We are almost halfway done with step one. Just going to like lightly whisk these raw eggs. Oh yeah. Oh, I love a parmy pesto. It's okay, great. This is going in. Okay. Great. Eggs are low key baking in there. Ah, so that's good. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm gonna cook some tater tots. Guys, are you excited for green eggs and ham? What? I said, are you excited for green eggs and ham? Literally nothing. I'm gonna take the tots out of the oven, and now we have a lot going on. Ooh. Okay, so up for oven can come off. That's great. Oh gosh, she's taking pictures. This is so fun. They look like gnocchi now. I cannot account for that transformation. What we are meant to do now is kind of get that excess grease off there, which I really didn't grease it very heavily, but I do see plenty of greasy goodness coming off these bagels. So, never let me say the words of that anyways again. Like I said, things are moving at an overwhelming clip now. We have some action items to take. The first of which is Place these in here. We have not very many tots, kind of basically coating the bottom of this dish. We are covering the tots with the green mixture. <laughs> you listen closely, you can hear plopping. This looks like cat turds and grass. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. Okay, so on top of that, about half of the ham. <laughs> That's 
going back in the oven for about three minutes. And when it does, what we're going to do is pour some hot queso. Oh, f it's almost pie time. This is gonna be great. What was on this plate? Oh, greasy tater tots. Yeah, that's fine. I have to heat up queso. So, dish can be described as gloopy. I'm gonna go get the pies out of the wherever I put them. Oh my god, they are entirely sunken like frozen ravioli now. We will deal with that in a minute. All the effort I put in and that's I mean it's not like you made them from scratch test. I, I mean you didn't put in that much effort really. You're right, I didn't try very hard. We reap what we sell. I don't know that I want to eat this. I'll eat it. Just kidding. I really don't want to eat it either. <laughs> Okay, here comes the fun part, boys and girls. You ready? I am. Hot queso, oh, really hot queso, over hot tots. To be clear also, this is the only universal sanctioned recipe of the three we're making today. They've never actually released a butterbeer recipe, so that's a secret, but there are plenty of copycat recipes. We'll be making a delicious copycat recipe. People swear it tastes like the real thing. The pumpkin pasties are also pasties, whatever. We're, we're too far gone to be worried about that for this point. Um, are also a copycat recipe. So this is what you can expect to find in Seuss Land. We're turning our attention back to pies now. So the oven is already preheated to 375 thanks to our tot adventure. We need to make shaken, but it is not destroyed, but okay, great. <laughs> it's the first time I've snorted since 2004. So we're gonna brush the hand pies and then bake them. I guess this is great and fun. Chill vibes, good vibes. Um, except the things we cannot change vibes, and this is what we cannot change. So, goodbye. Uh. Oh, okay. It's calzone. I tried. I'm sorry. Okay. Time for our deflated, not homemade, pumpkin ham pies. That are so full. best thing I've eaten all day. Maybe all week. It's Wednesday. It has crusted all over me. Okay, listen. This is truly delicious and really was a fun adventure at home. Can you know what it tastes like? One of those seasonal Pop-Tarts. Yeah. You smell the pesto coming off of it, which is something that I can confirm happens IRL. Oh my God, this a hot glass dish, um, which I am squeezing into my bosom. Covered in queso, covered in cold cuts. Oh yeah. Okay, I get it now. This strikes the perfect balance you want in the theme park of something crunchy, salty, the tiniest bit spicy, not overly spicy, and just generally magical because you wouldn't eat it in your regular life. This is the sh Oh yeah. Taking my hair down, that's how confident we feel about the ease of the butter beer recipe. Brought to you by, again, delish.com. I will remind you that the first time I had it in over a decade, when we shot our Wizarding World video, and it did almost bring me to tears. I haven't had this one in a decade, and it tastes exactly the same way I remember it, which is really just magical, making me the tiniest bit emotional. Will I cry today? The possibility is always there. I am generally on the brink of tears at any point. 
the ingredients are relatively simple. There is cream soda, there is butterscotch syrup, which I could not find anywhere, so we have caramel dip for apples. Heavy cream, actual sugar, vanilla extract, and then some melted butter. In a large bowl, combine cream soda and butterscotch syrup and stir. So this is my already not large enough bowl, I can tell. So just so explains that. Um, okay, that's I guess half a cup, whatever. Ooh, it looks like peanut butter chunk. Ooh, okay. So I'm just gonna stir this. I get it. Is this meant to be like a whimsical potion kind of thing? I guess the reason you use syrup is because syrup blends into liquid easier than chunks of caramel sauce. I'm gonna suck down chunks of caramel. Oh, my spoon is in the bowl now. that it is not the consistency it's meant to be. Is that chunky? It's too far gone. This is fine, so we're gonna beat this into a step yeast form. If the conclusion of this video is made from the straight, unwhipped, Heavy cream with melted butter in it, that chunks out to me. Oh, that's a soft peak. Okay, almost there. Truthfully, I didn't know that you could heat butter so hard that it uh, volcanoed in your microwave, so. Did it volcano? A little bit, but I cleaned it, so, you know. This is good. This is good, so good and easy. So we are folding in the sugar, okay, and vanilla. It occurs to me sometimes that I should show you the food while I'm doing this, but after I so humiliated myself in the last few videos, I'm just like, you go eat it, you know? Okay, this is nice though. It is like a lovely, creamy little consistency. And then we fold in this very hot melted butter, which I didn't measure at all, in. until it's no longer streaky with, ooh, ow, ow, ooh. Oh, okay. Okay, so it says until it's no longer streaky. It does look a bit broken, but I think that's honestly because I nuked the shit out of my butter. Why does everything I make turn out chunky? <laughs> you know what, fine. If it wants to look like a cottage cheese brain or something, I can do a stop it. Now, we take this and put it in here and then top it with that and then we drink it. The temperature is going to be an issue because I poured really hot butt. That's why it's curling. Is this for soup? It's for anything. It's a label. Why is it look so fancy? Because it was grandma's. Oh, oh, I can't. No. You're not gonna ruin it. <laughs> Even you couldn't kill just, that. She'll just know what I did. <laughs> she won't be happy. Oh my god, the caramel is gray now. This is the worst idea. Oh god. It's like the world's sweetest clam chowder. That it's floating so that's something we look for in a drink topping is porousness do you want a straw no i think i just have to drink it we are going to drink our oil and water butter beer it is separating in front of our eyes I don't want you to say that I didn't go the extra mile for you.
Okay. Um, that tastes like generic cream soda topped with butter, which is delicious and not something I want to drink more than three sips of, so I'll give you another two. Hot walk away now. No, this is great. I kind of like whipped all the um, carbonation out of it. Um, and butter beer typically is fizzy and delicious, so I am missing that. But honestly, I was gonna enjoy whatever came out of this combination of ingredients. So we did it. We did it. If you enjoyed this video, again, you will let me know. If you did not enjoy it, you always do let me know. Everyone, stay safe, stay inside, donate where you can. Don't nuke butter in your parents' microwave without the promise of cleaning it up. That's it, you guys. See you next time.